deep into that. Your children are included in the spiritual purpose of God. Hebrews chapter 7 from around verse 8. Shout my children are included in this thing. Now you hear people complaining, uh, why are some people behaving like if they are born again, they think their children are also called. We don't think our children are called. We know they are called. Tell them every day, if you like, go to the farthest ends of the university. You will serve God. Why? Because I've read it. The generation of the upright man will be blessed. Wealth and riches. I tell them whether you like it or not, you can't escape wealth. Whether you like it or not, you can't struggle the way I struggled. Whether you like it or not, wealth must be your trademark. Why? I read it in the word of God. People are blaming heads of states that are preparing their children. They read that scripture. I can't be a president and my child ends up becoming an idiot. The worldly people know what Christians don't know. Our brothers, the Indians, they never buy a property bishop without the witness of their children. It is only believers that allow children to become as fat as cats. Living in a house they never knew how it was bought. Watching cartoons while they are laboring. The day they die, the children sell the wealth that they labored for. Because they never train the children. Wealth is not taught in school. It's taught by a father. When you're going to buy land, tell him, come over here. This is what it takes. This is so and so. This is so and so. This is land. You know, the problem is many of us work for our children without working with our children. With all humility, the next time I come back, I'll carry a book written by my son. He's only 14. He's written his first book. Why? What God has given you, your child should not go to school to learn it. It should flow to him by reason of blood. And then by reason of training. If you build wealth, by the time a child gets to a certain age, he's supposed to be able to run what you do without going to school. That's why Indians in the morning, they're in the shop with every child. They're the ones selling. But Christians know they are doing a favor to the children by taking them for an expensive holiday. And buying them games. And they watch TV while you are going to labor. Then you take him to an expensive school without giving him expensive mental education. Showing him wealth. In this country we have two families. The Odinga family and the Kenyatta family. If you look at the leader of the official opposition, when he was a baby, a boy, he was always in the hands of the father. Kneeling down before a congress. Some of the Jamhuri days that are on Facebook, the president was a small boy. He had a tie and a coat. Other children are running with bicycles. He is seated in a Madaraka Day celebration in Uhuru Park. He can't comprehend what is happening. He is being trained. Today, he is a president. Believers cannot learn from that. God is a generation of God. That some of you have children who are 25 years old that cannot operate an ATM does not know how much property you have and is your son at 25 he's asking you for money to go and shave his beard say mbuyu manze manze nigeika kitu hapo nene nikanyoe beard na suruali yake iko hapa chini hivi amesimama kama batman hivi manze nigei hapo 25 bo mbuyu niende nikanyoe ndevu i came to awaken your spirit that the god that you serve this God that you are serving goes to generations. Wealth is not money that you acquire. Wealth is a mindset that is planted in a child. Can I tell you one truth? Children born in empires don't go to school to get a job. They go to school as a matter of procedure. But from the time they were born, they are trained as a king. 
If you run across Africa, there's a promotion that just happened the other day. A young man in the army has been promoted to a certain position. All that people who don't think can do is make noise. There are people who make news and there are people who make noise. Newsmakers give them something to write on the internet. If you see the comments some people write on Facebook, if they used that time to write a book, by now they'll be authors. If you see the amount of time some people give to speaking negativity about others, if they use that time to better their lives, they'll be far today. When you see a post on Facebook that Bill Gates has posted, he's not even aware the post has gone. And you are talking as if you are addressing him, giving him details and everything. Bill Gates, I'm talking to you from Mombasa. Bill Gates doesn't even know Facebook exists. He's not there. There's a word I love. Pambana na haliyako. Hebrews chapter 7. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, my God is great. My generation is included. Oh boy. Oh, I love that. Now give me the New, New King James Version. We look at it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, now let's get back a little bit to verse number. This is verse number 8. Verse number 7. Glory to God. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Now, verse number uh, 8. Somebody shout here. Now, here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Verse number 9. Even Levi who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak. Verse number, <laughs> verse number 10. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met Abraham. Now, let's go to the message translation. God is bigger than where you are now. There are some of you who think you are hustling and God has already ordained your great grandson that will take the nation by storm. There are prayers you pray today that will be answered in the generation of your great grandchildren. It's not all prayers will be, pray will be answered when you're alive. There are people here that think you can never be anything, but your great granddaughter has already been prepared for a platform in the world. In the next 25 years, you just don't understand. We serve a big, big, big God. Now look at this. In acts of blessing, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Or look at it this way. We pay our tithe to priests who die. But Abraham paid tithe to a priest who the scripture says lives. Ultimately, you could even say that since Levi descended from Abraham who paid tithes to Melchizedek, when we pay tithes to the priestly tribe of Levi, they end up with Melchizedek. The New King James Version brings it well. Let's go back to the New King James Version. There is what I want you to see. Lift up your hands and say, God is big. God is concerned about my children. Don't pray that like God is concerned about your trouser. Just your trouser, you are praying for a new trouser. God is a big God. Don't limit an unlimited God. While you are praying about your shoe, you're saying, what about your descendants? Because when I come, I don't only have something for you. I have something for your descendants as well. It tells you the kind of a God we are serving. Don't pray like he's a beggar. Don't pray like God will run broke if he answers your prayer. Verse number, number nine. Even Levi who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. Now let me explain. Abraham, shout generation one. Oh. Abraham, say generation one. Generation one. Isaac, say generation two. Generation Jacob, say generation three. generation 
Levi, say generation 4. Now Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot the 12 sons. And one of the 12 sons was Levi. Abraham met Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a type of Christ. There is what we call in theology the pre-Bethlehemic appearance of Christ. The places where Christ appeared before Bethlehem. When Jacob wrestled with a man, the word man is in capital. The word man was not an angel. That was the pre-Bethlehemic appearance of Jesus. He was there from Genesis to Revelation. Jesus is the total summary of the Bible. Every page of the Bible you see him. From Genesis to Revelation, the entire Bible is about one character, the man Jesus Christ. And Jesus didn't show up when Mary gave birth to him. The Bible says, he is the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the earth was laid. So he didn't just die at Calvary. He died before this world existed. It's called predestination. And we now know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called, according to his purpose. For them that he for, F-O-R-E, knew, he also pre, P-R-E, destinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, them that he predestinated, he called. Them that he called, he justified. Them that he justified, he glorified. There is no he will glorify. There is no he will call. There is no he will justify. Them that he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Why? Because God speaks to Jeremiah and he says, Before your mother conceived you, I knew you. And before you were born, I ordained you. So when God ordains a man, it's not the day we pour oil on his head. The oil is a confirmation of men. But the real oil was on the man's head before he was born. Galatians chapter 1, when Paul is speaking, he says, And when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, to reveal his son in me. So Paul is saying, even when I was killing Christians, I was a separated man. This thing happened before I appeared. Jesus spoke at one time and he said, before Abraham was, I was. In fact, he didn't say I was, he said I am. God is the only one that is allowed to make grammatical errors when he's presenting a truth. Before Abraham was, I am. Tell them I am that I am has sent you. The statement has no subject, the statement has no object. It is incomplete because you can't complete God. Let's look at Paul, then we go back. But when it pleased God, oh boy, I love God. He's big. God is huge. God is too much. Tonight we are going to pray for things that are beyond our understanding. God is too much. God is too big. When he gives you, he gives plus what your children will eat. When he deals with you, he doesn't just deal with you. He deals with the generations to come. Look at this. Okay, Paul, Galatians chapter 1. But when it pleased God. Verse 14. Oh, glory to God. Now Paul said, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb? He did not separate me on the road to Damascus. The road to Damascus is something God saw before I was born. God separated me before I came to this world. So don't let my killing Christians deceive you. That God cannot use me. Everything that was happening, God was looking at it. There are anti-ministers that are still dancing in the club. And God is protecting them. With a bottle in their hands. And God is saying, look at the anointed man. My own. 
there are people God wants to use in the bar that you can't even greet. There's a man in church history called A.A. A. Allen. The father was a brewer. The mother was a brewer. The parents were terrible drunkards. When he was born as a child, the baby bottle was being filled with liquor, alcohol. So when a child said, yeah! When he was 25, he was dying. His lungs were rotten. Was born in a mess nobody has ever been born into. But when it pleased God to lay his hand on A.A. Allen, no man has been used like that man. That is the man that affected R.W. Shambak. The miracles that happened in the meetings of A.A. Allen were rare miracles. I read somewhere that there was a time in his ministry that he would stretch his hands if you had metals in your bones. If he stretched his hands, the metals would come out and fall down. A man, when God wants to do it, God allows it to be messed up beyond repair. So that when he repairs it, no carpenter can say I repaired it. There is a mess God can get into that no man can get into. They brought the woman caught in the act of adultery. They carried stones. They said, Jesus, this one is not an accusation. This one was caught right in the act. Naked like bananas. Jumping up and down like frogs. We caught her. We have come with evidence. He didn't touch the woman. He touched the dirty place. He wrote on the ground. He was telling them, I specialize in writing, in writing parts that have been written off. Him that has no sin, let him be the first one to throw a stone at the woman. And stones came from their hands and fell down. Jesus looked at the woman with the eyes of mercy. Men that have had an encounter with God says when he looks at you, every negativity in your life gets dissolved. You see a love you've never seen through the eyes of any man. And he looked at the woman and he said, daughter, neither do I condemn you. Go and see no more. And he said, my masses are new every morning. He knows you may have used the ones for yesterday. So this morning, a new insurance cover for the mercy of God upon your life. He said, there are two things that will follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Abraham is generation number one. Isaac is generation number two. Levi is gener uh, 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 uh. Abraham generation one. Isaac generation two. Jacob generation three. Levi generation four. When Abraham met Melchizedek and he paid tithe, God says Levi in generation 4 also paid the tithe. Which means when you kneel down praying, one of your children may be dancing in the disco, but he's not actually dancing in the disco. He's dancing in the Holy Ghost. Because when you pray, he's praying. When you fast, he's fasting. I came to encourage those of you that feel like your children are becoming wayward. They are coming up with things you cannot comprehend. I came to tell you, they are in the plan of God. Every time you give, they give. Every time you sow, they are sowing. Every time you pray, they are praying. Every time you serve God, they are serving God. They have no otherwise. When Abraham paid tithe, Levi paid tithe. God is a generational God. In other words, the God we serve is bigger than we can imagine. There are people who believe they can become part of a generational curse, but they don't believe they can become part of a generational blessing. There are generational curses and there are generational blessings. Abraham was blessed. 
Isaac was blessed. Jacob was blessed. Joseph was blessed. Abraham carried something that he placed on Isaac. Isaac placed it on Jacob. Jacob placed it on Joseph. Joseph placed it on Jesus. Jesus placed it on Olo. He's a generation of God. Abraham married a beautiful wife. Isaac married a beautiful wife. Jacob was confused between two women. If one looked at you like this, she's looking at that side. So they gave Jacob a woman that is not as beautiful as what the father married. And Jacob woke up in the morning and said, what is this? In our blood, we don't go for this. 